This video has disclaimers. Disclaimer number one. Before we get started, we're not fixing anything. We're just gonna be doing a lot of talking. If that's not your cup of tea, no big deal. Maybe we'll see you back here on the next one. I wanna talk about Edison Motors. They're a startup, if you wanna call it that, out of British Columbia. They built a complete working hybrid diesel electric semi truck from scratch, basically in a tent. And now they wanna bring their, their product to market. So we're gonna talk about how it works, why it's awesome, and then I'm gonna derail the hype train when we look at the numbers. Disclaimer number two. I wanna to try to stay out of the politics. You can think whatever you want about EVs and hybrids. They are coming whether you like it or not. Personally, I'm all for it. I would love to see electric semi trucks on the road. I also want to see Edison Motors succeed. They seem like good people and they have clearly put a lot of work into this project. What is Edison Motors? It's a small company. I think it was two guys originally and now they have a small crew. They're in the trucking business and they wanted an electric semi truck. They tried to buy a Tesla, but after waiting for years for it to be delivered, they decided to just design and build their own truck, which is pretty ambitious. That truck is called Topsy. It's a heavy spec truck designed for hauling logs. It has a Caterpillar C9 diesel engine that powers a generator. That generator charges some large batteries. Those batteries drive electric motors in the axles. The truck can run for a few hours on battery power then the diesel generator takes over and it basically gives you unlimited range. And because the engine only powers a generator, it can run at a very efficient RPM and it doesn't need to be as large as the normal 12 to 15 liter diesel engine that you find in a semi truck. Topsy was designed to haul logs down a mountain. And the idea is that you use regenerative braking going down the mountain with a full load of logs to charge the batteries. Then you use the battery power to go back up the mountain empty. And they say in the right conditions, it requires no energy input. It generates as much power as it consumes, which is pretty clever. I've seen similar setups with trains. They'll use them in pairs. So the train going down the mountain will feed power back to the train going up the mountain. There's other features too that are kind of geared towards driver convenience and safety and repairability. The cab has a ton of glass. The driver sits in the middle for better visibility. They use as many off the shelf components as possible. There's no planned obsolescence. The engine and electronics are easy to access. The truck itself is built like a tank. They have a thick frame, Hendrickson suspension, planetary axles. I mean, the thing is an absolute beast. As a mountain logging truck, it seems like an absolute slam dunk. But Edison doesn't want to stop there. They want to sell their system as a retrofit kit for semi trucks and other large vocational trucks. They're also developing a retrofit kit for pickup trucks. And there's something like 50 million pickup trucks just in the US. So if it works out, it could be huge. They have one working prototype. They're also accepting pre-orders, building a dealer network, courting investors, and generating a lot of hype, especially on social media. And that's good, that's, that's what you have to do if you wanna bring a product to market. The problem is they're making some pretty incredible claims, but they don't have any real world test results. As far as I can tell, all the numbers they're throwing around are estimates in the best case and wild guesses in the worst case. So let's pick those numbers apart. Disclaimer number three. This is one of the many well-justified reasons why people don't like engineers. Since we don't have hearts or emotions and our math skills are a lot better than our social skills, it's basically our job to be professional buzzkills. 
So let's kill some buzz. On their website, they say a retrofit kit costs a third to half the price of a new truck and provides five to 100% fuel savings. But what does fuel savings actually mean? Initially, I thought it meant an overall increase in efficiency as a diesel electric hybrid, which would be incredible. But I don't think that's the case. I think what they mean is if your truck runs for two hours on battery power and six hours on generator power, that's a 25% fuel savings. If you only run for two hours, that's a 100% fuel savings, which is a very confusing and borderline deceptive specification, in my opinion. What they're basically saying is that their truck has two fuel tanks and you have to fill both of them, but when you calculate the fuel mileage, you only count one. Battery power is still power and it has to come from somewhere and it has a cost. So in the US, we use a specification called miles per gallon equivalent, MPGE. And that is a way to judge a hybrid or electric vehicle compared to its internal combustion engine counterpart. It's kind of an apples to apples comparison. I suspect it's difficult for Edison to calculate that because they don't have any real world test results, but I also think they might not be telling us that because their MPGE is actually worse than before the retrofit. Edison Motors has a YouTube channel and they put out a lot of content. They've documented this entire development process and they have a video called Diesel Electric Advantage where they throw around a lot of numbers. And I've watched that video multiple times and I cannot make those numbers add up. Now the video's over a year old, that was before they built Topsy. So we'll take it with a grain of salt, but I still wanna go through it. They claim that a semi truck with a 280 kilowatt hour battery can run for two to three hours on battery power. And then a 250 kilowatt generator can recharge the battery in 30 minutes. In the same video, they say a loaded truck uses 200 kilowatts of power to cruise at highway speed. If that's true, then I think we're looking at more like 1.4 hours of battery power. The generator on their truck is powered by a C9 Caterpillar engine that makes about 250 kilowatts of power. Charging a 280 kilowatt hour battery with a 250 kilowatt generator should take over an hour. But if you're charging the battery while you're still driving the truck, it's, it's worse than that because the truck takes 200 kilowatts right off the top. So now you only have 50 kilowatts to charge the battery. According to my math, that would take 5.6 hours to recharge. So whose math is right? I really don't know. But as far as I can tell, Edison's claims rely on three major factors. First, Electric motors are more efficient than a traditional drivetrain. Second, the truck's gonna be doing a lot of stopping. They can use regenerative braking to recharge the batteries. And third, a diesel generator powering electric motors is more efficient than a diesel engine powering a traditional drivetrain. Let's start with the most plausible factor that Electric motors are more efficient. You hear this all the time. People will say, you know, electric motors have more torque. They have a flat torque curve. That is true, but it's not quite that simple. It, it comes with an asterisk. This is a typical electric motor torque curve. It is flat, which means it has maximum torque at zero RPM and that torque remains constant. The power is a function of the speed. So the faster the motor spins, the more power it puts out. It reaches maximum power at maybe 1500 or 3000 RPM. And that's not a very usable RPM range, especially for something like an EV 
where we don't want to have a transmission and a bunch of complicated gears. But that's okay because the motor can actually run much faster than this. There's a whole other side to this graph. This is way oversimplified, so don't quote me on this, but in an electric motor, torque is basically equal to current. Speed, or RPM, is basically equal to voltage. Power is torque times speed, RPM in this case. Power is also volts times amps. So volts times amps equals torque times RPM. The voltage is limited by physical factors in the motor, like the air gap and eddy current and lots of complicated stuff. It's also partially limited by the battery. The battery can only make so many volts. The current is limited by the wires in the motor. Just like any wires, they can only take so much current before they melt into a puddle. When we reach maximum voltage and maximum current, that's the maximum power, and that happens here at the base speed. At this point, we cannot increase the voltage or the amperage, so we cannot increase the power. We cannot increase this side of the equation. But using some electrical trickery, like field weakening and messing with the frequency, we can make the motor go faster. But in order to increase the RPM, the trade-off is we have to reduce the torque. Otherwise, this equation doesn't work. So basically, you can split the graph into two sections. There's a constant torque section and then a constant power section. We want the maximum RPM range we can get, but we're losing all of our torque. So the way we usually get around this is we just massively overspec the motor. That way we still have enough torque up here to get the job done. The consequence is we now have way more torque down low than what we really need. This is why we have cyber trucks literally ripping their wheels off. And that's why the fastest accelerating vehicles you can buy are all EVs. They don't necessarily need all that torque down low. It's a side effect of needing torque up high. Actually, the Tesla Semi has a pretty clever solution to this issue. They use two drive axles, like a normal Semi, but each axle has a different motor or at least a different gear ratio. And one is set up for low speed torque and the other for high speed torque. They use a mechanical clutch to engage the appropriate motor at the appropriate time. And it can use either motor by itself or both motors together, depending on the situation. There is one more caveat with electric motors. They typically have a duty cycle. You'll see in the specifications that they'll have a peak torque and a continuous torque, or a peak power and continuous power. And the peak will have a time limit. So it might say 400 Newton meters for 30 minutes, 300 Newton meters continuous. That does not mean you can make peak torque for 30 minutes. What that means is that you can make peak torque for 30 minutes out of every hour. It's basically a 50% duty cycle. If you exceed that duty cycle, it gets too hot and you risk melting the motor into a puddle. The duty cycle also applies to regenerative braking, which we'll talk about in a minute. One more nitpick with the Edison axles. They claim they can produce 110,000 foot-pounds of torque at the wheels with three drive motors. They're only using two drive motors, so I don't know what the actual spec is, but they claim that it's more than a traditional diesel semi-truck which is not true, according to my math. A 15 liter diesel engine makes 1,850 foot-pounds of torque. An 18 speed transmission has a low gear ratio of 14.4 to one. With a 410 rear gear, that would be 109,224 foot-pounds of torque. So it's very possible that the Edison axles have more torque in certain RPM ranges, but from a dead stop, it's a dead wash as far as I'm concerned. It's possible that their electric axles are more efficient. How much more efficient, I really don't know.
Let's move on to the next most plausible factor. Regenerative braking can recharge the batteries and increase efficiency. If you're not familiar with regenerative braking, it means that the electric drive motors can be reversed and turned into generators, which slow the truck and recharge the batteries. It seems like free energy, which it basically is, but it's not quite that simple. In the case where you're hauling logs down a mountain, yes, regenerative braking could make all the energy that you need. But that is a very, very rare use case. You know, where I live, there's plenty of logging, but we don't have a whole lot of mountains. Edison says, the more you stop, the harder you work your truck in the hills, the more regenerative braking energy that you get, which is true. However, it comes with another asterisk. The most efficient regenerative braking systems that I'm aware of can only convert about 60% of the energy used for braking back into acceleration. Let's say you're cruising at highway speed, you regenerative brake to a stop, then you accelerate back to highway speed. Even if we ignore air resistance, rolling resistance, all those factors, you still use more energy than you generate. Same thing with hills. You start at the top, your regenerative brake all the way down. By the time you get to the top of the next hill, you will have less energy than you started with. You have to, otherwise you have perpetual motion. The only way it works is in the logging case because they're loaded going down and empty coming back up. If you're the same weight or the same speed from point A to point B, you will use energy. Yes, Regenerative braking is more efficient than a traditional drivetrain. It is not as much more efficient as you might think. That leaves the most dubious factor. A diesel electric hybrid is more efficient than a regular engine and transmission. The Edison truck is a series hybrid. A diesel engine powers a generator. The generator charges the batteries. The batteries power the electric drive motors. There is no mechanical connection between the engine and the wheels. Edison says that's more efficient because the generator only runs at its most efficient RPM. Hybrid semi trucks are not new. I looked through research papers on hybrid trucks. I could not find any information on series hybrids. As far as I know, no one's ever made a true series hybrid. They've always been parallel hybrids. That means that through a complex series of clutches and gears, there's some way to couple some amount of engine power directly to the wheels. That's true of the Prius, that's true of the Chevy Volt. As far as I know, it's true of every current hybrid semi-truck. The reason is simple. It's more efficient. This study by the Oak Ridge National Laboratory found a 7 to 8% increase in fuel economy was possible with a parallel hybrid semi, but no significant savings were found with a series hybrid due to the, quote, large efficiency penalties associated with converting propulsion energy from mechanical to electrochemical form and back to mechanical form. I should mention that the study was based on computer simulations, not real-world testing. I suspect that's probably because no one's ever made a series hybrid truck that they can test. This study by the National Renewable Energy Lab shows hybrid UPS delivery trucks getting a 13 to 20 percent increase in fuel economy in real-world testing. Again, these are parallel hybrids. Edison likes to compare their trucks to diesel locomotives, which are diesel over electric. It's basically the same setup minus the batteries. The problem is locomotives are not that efficient. Most sources claim 20 to 25% thermal efficiency. A traditional semi truck is somewhere in the range of 30 to 40% thermal efficiency. They're basically twice as efficient as a locomotive. 
trains have massive efficiency advantages in rolling resistance, air resistance, carefully controlled grade and speed. It's an apples to oranges comparison. The efficiency of a train does not come from the diesel electric layout. I don't know what else to say about that. The guys at Edison, they seem to be just baffled that nobody's ever made a diesel electric semi. I don't think they ever stopped to ask why that is. It's less efficient. It just, it is. If anybody has any proof otherwise, I would love to see it. Let's move on to cost. Edison says this setup is going to save you money. They don't say how much. I'm sure it depends on a lot of factors, but the impression I get is that the conversion should at least pay for itself. Edison says one third to half the cost of a new truck. At the time I'm making this video, EV batteries are about $150 per kilowatt hour. Edison's largest battery option is 280 kilowatt hours. So just the battery alone is gonna cost $42,000. A new CAT C9 engine, that's got to cost at least 20 grand. A generator, battery management system, let's just say 10 grand. Then you need two electric axles, we'll just say 12,000, I have no idea. You also need to pay for installation, again, I have no idea, but I would think at least 20,000. So we're over $100,000. I don't know what a new semi-truck costs either. I guess if it's 200000 then Edison is right on. What about the pickup truck kit? Again, I'm just guessing here because they haven't released any specs about this one. Let's say an 80 kilowatt hour battery, that's 12,000 bucks. You might use a small diesel engine like the Cummins R2.8. I think those are about $10,000. A 4x4 truck's going to need two axles. Let's say that's 8,000. Generator battery management, maybe 5,000. Installation, let's say 15,000. So that's $50,000. Now, a lot of pickup trucks now are up around $100,000. So again, that seems like it, it might be right. I made a spreadsheet to help us with the numbers. There's a lot of variables. So let's just walk through some examples. Let's build a semi truck. I'm going to use $5 a gallon for fuel. That's pretty close to the national average. We'll say it normally gets seven miles per gallon. This guy is a real go getter. He runs 90,000 miles a year and he works five days a week, 50 weeks a year. The Edison kit costs hundred thousand dollars I'm not going to count the value of the truck before the kit we'll just assume that it has no value we're going to use 280 kilowatt hours for the battery and I'm going to say the battery only range is maybe a hundred miles I think that's pretty close based on estimates I've seen the truck still has an internal combustion engine so there's still going to be a lot of maintenance, but we'll just say that it's $1,000 a year less. And you can see, if we don't have any efficiency gains, like no gains in miles per gallon, we're looking at an 18-year payback period. And that is, that's not very good. A five-year payback is pretty standard for the industry. Three years would be even better. To get to a five-year payback, we need to increase the fuel efficiency by 45%. And I can tell you that that is straight up never gonna happen. What about a vocational truck? That's where Edison says their kit really is gonna shine. They're claiming 70 to 100% fuel savings. Vocational trucks are dump trucks, cement trucks, service trucks, they mostly make local trips and return to the same place every night. They do a lot of stop and go driving. They also drive more with no load or partial load. So let's build one of those. We'll say it normally gets six miles per gallon. 
It runs 35,000 miles a year and 200 days a year. Kit cost is the same. We're going to use the same battery, same everything. You can see our payback here is 14 years. If we want to get it down to five years, uh, we actually cannot do it because even if we max out the efficiency, we never quite get to five years. Let's try a smaller truck, maybe kind of like a pickup truck. So we'll say that normally it can get 20 miles per gallon. It runs 20,000 miles a year, the same 200 days a year. The retrofit cost is going to be lower, 50,000. And we'll say the battery's 80 kilowatt hours, and we'll leave the range the same at 100 miles. Maintenance savings, it's going to be less, let's say $500 a year. There are no efficiency gains because this truck doesn't use any fuel. It runs all on electric power. But you can see our, our payback period is over 20 years. And this spreadsheet's not just a, a buzzkill for Edison. It works for pretty much any electric vehicle. So let's try a cyber truck. We'll say it gets 15 miles per gallon, runs 12,000 miles a year, we'll say the same 200 days a year. Uh, let's just say a, a cyber truck costs $35,000 more than an equivalent pickup truck. Battery size, I think, is around 125 kilowatt hours, and the range is uh, maybe 250 miles. Leave that the same. It would take over 10 years to justify a Tesla just based on fuel savings. Now, if you compare that to a $100,000 luxury truck, you know, it starts to look a little bit better. So maybe if this is only $15,000 more, you know, that's a pretty reasonable payback period. There's a ton of other challenges with a retrofit kit. Edison seems to be targeting older trucks that are solid, but the drivetrain is worn out. I don't know where you find trucks like that, but it certainly isn't around here. On my old trucks, the drivetrain is tip top. In fact, it's the only thing holding the rotten body and frame together. You're gonna have to figure out safety things like ABS brakes and airbags. You're also gonna need electric power steering, electric power brakes, electric heating and air conditioning. Newer trucks are gonna have complex CAN bus networks that have to be dealt with. And every year, make and model is gonna be a little bit different. So there's no way to make a universal kit. As far as I know, in my lifetime, no one has ever attempted to make an aftermarket, emissions compliant, turnkey driveline replacement for a pickup truck, let alone a complicated diesel over electric hybrid system. That is gonna be a monumental challenge. That brings up other issues too. You know, what are the emissions requirements for this kit? Does it need to have DPF and DEF and all the rest of the alphabet soup emissions stuff? Does it qualify for tax credits as an EV or a hybrid? I don't think anybody knows. So I don't know how to feel about all this. It seems like Edison's offering a complicated, expensive, questionably efficient retrofit kit that gives you some battery only range and not a whole lot of other benefits. It feels kind of like a solution in search of a problem. On a purely economic basis, I just can't see how it makes any sense. On the other hand, who cares? I mean, diesel powered pickup trucks don't make sense for most people who buy them. It's virtually impossible to justify buying a $120,000 Cybertruck, but Tesla can't build them fast enough. If we bought our cars based on a spreadsheet, we'd all be driving a 20 year old Honda Civic. 
you know, there's a lot more to it than just the numbers. I hope this didn't come off as mean-spirited or anti-Edison. Like I said, I like those guys and I like what they're trying to do. There's definitely a lot of enthusiasm and excitement about the project. I hope that more small companies get into the EV market. You don't need to have a multi-million dollar R&D budget to have a good idea. I know that Edison and DeBoss Garage, they're hard at work on more prototypes. Hopefully, we're going to see some real-world test results coming out soon. Maybe at that point, I'll make a follow-up video. And if there is crow to be eaten, we'll take care of it then. I'll put links to the Edison Motors website and their YouTube channel. I'll put links to any of the papers that I cited. And maybe I'll put a link to the spreadsheet so you guys can play around with that. Let me know what you think in the comments. If I screwed something up, which is highly likely, I will put corrections in a pinned comment. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.